All right, it is Sunday, and this is going to be the weekly recap for the previous week, which was the 30th to the 3rd, so it was a transition from August to September, and uh, yeah, we're in the 5th. I had four tiny trades, and if we look back here, I did not trade, I did trade the 31st, and then I had these two red days, and then the green day right here on Friday. And uh, what a surprise, the two red days were trading setups that I attempted on a listed stock. These are the four trades right here. Here are the dates, the tickers, the setup idea, long or short. This was not listed, this was an OTC, and that should be all caps. There we go. It was the same stock PBYA in the beginning and the end. Those were my two profitable trades, tiny percent gains, and then again the two red days they were listed stocks. And what I learned really from that week is just to not really consider high a day breakouts on listed stocks. It might be because I'm just not good with listed stocks. I'm not able to read them well or they just don't work as nicely. Uh, maybe it's just not the right market for breakouts on listed stocks. There could be a ton of reasons why. SWRM was a nice OTC high a day breakout that actually worked on Friday but I did not trade that one and that one would have been a pretty profitable trade I think there were just not really that many nice morning panic bounce plays which is unfortunate because this is a month that I started to implement that red candle rule that if a red candle forms before it breaks past VWAP on a morning panic bounce play setup there's a high chance that it will top under it and I have seen that to be consistent I haven't been able to sell near the highs or at VWAP, but I'm going to go ahead and go over those trades before I get too carried away. It's going to be a quick, um, just a very quick weekly recap. Four trades, two green days, two green trades, 50%. Now, I did not do good, and I wasn't happy with this. I don't mind the losses right here, the dollar losses, but I do mind the percent losses. And my average dollar gain, of course, that was between these two trades. My average dollar loss was a bit higher. My average percent gain was tiny. I mean, the setups were not really that nice, although there was some range. In theory, I could have sold both of these two trade um, setups that worked a little higher. My average percent loss, which I don't like, is here. I just get wrecked on these um, just wiki high day breakouts that just fail my average position size on the winning trade which helped you know is much larger than the loser trades because I knew that they were listed stocks and are not really too ideal my average um, time in a trade that you know made money which I only have four stocks to do this data with so I can't take things too seriously too um, you know too analytically just just a general guideline I was in a winning trade longer than a losing trade probably because these two I had to cut losses quickly only eight dollars <laughs> and 77 cents down on the week and that was with eleven hundred dollars of volume if we go back here it's honestly not that bad really it's just eight tiny dollars no really nice morning panic bounce plays that I traded they didn't seem that nice we're gonna go ahead and go over it and again I like this even though I did lose eight, it was just a tiny, you know, percent in terms of the total um, dollar volume traded, which was right here. In terms of the setup, I got actually got an F. I think that's the first time I get an F. Right, it's 69. Did I ever get something? I got. I had one here. I actually had a 59. But I think this is when I had an issue with my um, reporting. I had one of the formulas wrong, so I was actually. You know at a disadvantage but definitely a low score and that was probably just because I traded you know those two listed stocks and there were two no's and then because I only have four trades it really makes an impact and of course here I got an A minus in terms of that I trade well I just shouldn't really try these high day breakouts so listed stocks is clearly something that I'm not really good at this is probably gonna be a very quick let's just go over these four trades and see if I can grasp anything from it I'm sure there are some things I can learn from it other than just to not trade these listed stock setups unless this may be like 
and inverse head shoulders. I, I I seem to do really good with that. Let's go ahead and look at PBYA for the 31st. And that was a morning panic bounce setup. Right here was the 30th. Let's go one more day. 31st. Not too ideal, but sometimes morning panic bounce plays do work really nice when it's at its highs. And it still might want to continue the uptrend and put some more green days. So this was not really on one of those days it just it's at its highs but it's not really trying to uptrend so much anymore it's trying to hold itself but it's not really uptrending this was a 30 31st I did not trade anything on Monday it seems like this was the setup right here 939 I was in the trade at 150 right here actually uh, I remember here uh, I was trying to get in when it was around 145 my limit was at 15 I didn't get the best entry but at least I got in the trade I held through this Zoji candle which was nerve-wracking I held through this green candle and then after this red candle here formed and that's when I sold I can remember the trade my sell was 943 15 15 so 943 was this one was it really that yeah 943 15 15 right after this red candle closed so probably right here sure i could have done better with my sell because i mean it did get close to vwap 159 that could have really helped percent wise but i'm still trying to slowly develop out this morning panic bounce play setup and that was a new rule you know to help me try to hold these things a lot better if it has a red candle under VWAP in my top, clearly top tier, it actually downtrended again. So I think that was a good attempt and that's why I said that I traded really nicely because that was my first trade where I really started to enact this rule and I think it helped. You know, I could have sold higher but I did avoid the fear that it would top out at some point under VWAP and downtrend. It did get higher from my sell but again it did top out and I was avoiding something that doesn't even touch VWAP or get close to it and tops out right there I think that is not the right I think that's not the right name for that stock if I had a guess I think it was ABVC I'm pretty sure that was ABVC Let's see if I got it right. September 1st, ABVC, high a day breakout. Uh, geez, that might not be it. Was it 195? That was not it. Maybe it was AVVC. This is totally guessing. And that does not seem like it's it. I got the wrong ticker. Let me see what the name is. Okay, I'm back. Yeah, I did get it right. It was ABVC. That was my first guess, I think. And I just did not get it because... Hold up. Let me confirm. Yeah, ABVC. What threw me off is that I just saw the price was at 325, right? And I was like, well, this thing was trading around 457. I don't know. I, I thought this thing this this probably threw me off the wick right here because the it just looked dead to me. It looks like it had more volatility than that. This looks a lot nicer. This was a th th yeah definitely. This makes a lot more sense. This was the day right here, September first. Stupid degenerate day trading freaking Nasdaq stocks. Although some of them were just worse. I probably should stay away from it, but I can already see where my painful trade is. But if you can tell I was trading it up here in the highs. It did get much lower. So this one failed spectacularly. And that's exactly where I trade it. Right there. 457 was my entry at 959. I got out the same minutes. 431. So 457. It was this candle. I got in right here. 457. And then I got out at uh, 457 was my entry. My exit was 431, which was what's, yeah, it was like back here in the bottom. So basically I just went for an attempt that this thing was going to, because of the price action, was going to break out and do something nice. 
So I got in at 457. It did get as high as 475. It broke this range here pre-market. And I thought this thing could continue. It could do something really nice. You know, the day was back there on this red day, ultimately. And I thought it could be that kind of thing that just breaks out of the range, starts halting up, you know, doing crazy moves like a lot of these random freaking um, NASDAQ plays are. But I'm clearly not good at it. It totally got wrecked here. Not easy, not really possible to cut losses quickly when it trades with this much volatility, but that's totally fine. Um, it just it just was an attempt, and it didn't really work out. I was in a trade for 20 seconds. Again, I'm not going to trade these things anymore, high as they breakouts. Clearly, I'm not good at them. Maybe I was just unlucky, and I picked the ones that don't work. But that was a trade there. TKAT was the next trade, same setup, high as a breakout. Let's look at TKAT for the second. The second is back here. You know, nice uptrend. I mean, it went from 5 to like 12-ish, but these NASDAQ plays, I'm just not that good at them. I'm going to guess I traded when it was back here near the highs. My entry was 10.02, 14.75. Let's zoom in a little more. It did fade the rest of the day. 10.02 was right here. 14.75. Was it really... Did I top tick this? I almost top ticked it. <laughs> yeah, again, it looked like it was going to break the highs right here, do some kind of nice explosive short squeeze or something like that. I'm clearly not looking at these the right way. These are clearly better short setups. The thing is at $8 now, and I was trading it back here in the 14, so at least I'm not that crazy that I bag hold it. I got out two minutes later at 14.25. So, yeah, 14.25 was a 10.04. Yep, 10.04, 14.25. You know, really nasty, especially when it broke VWAP. Try to get above it. It failed. This was like a confirmed breakdown under VWAP. That wouldn't have been such a bad short in the 13s. It did get to the low 13s, so not really the best range, but at least it trades with volume. Again, I'm just clearly not good at these. I'm not going to trade them anymore. At least I did trade tiny position size, 147 $228, because I knew it wasn't too ideal. I think it was good experience, though, um, just knowing what you can do, what I can do, what I can't do. And clearly, I'm just not looking at those things the right way. Maybe, you know, it's a better short setup. For right now, I am just probably won't trade those anymore. The last one was a third for PBYA that was a morning panic bounce play right here not the best on the daily chart but again it does sometimes offer really nice morning panic bounce plays it did really nicely the week before I was doing that red candle rule but now I'm ready for it if not this one eventually I will be able to do it just look at it from right here I think my entry was right here the little doji candle let's confirm 936 15 so yeah right here 15 I was in at 15 I was probably risking the day low at 148 not a huge size because it at its worst was down six percent the volume wasn't really there but I took the trade anyway I got out 938, 1520, so 152, 938, 152. I got out right here. It did get as high as 15.5. It did touch VWAP, but it did top above. Not above. It did top out below VWAP. Why did I get out? I'm in here. Immediately the next candle, although it uptrended, was a red candle. That's why I sold. 15.2, the next candle afterwards avoiding any kind of topping action especially on a setup that wasn't that nice it didn't drop that much it didn't offer that much volume it did top out again at VWAP but again it topped out it had that red candle I've seen nice morning panic bounce places um, morning panic bounce plays where it bottoms it has consistent green candles it gets way above VWAP right and then it has a red candle and then, you know, maybe once that red candle is formed, a top was already made, 
and I can sell right then and there and get the meat of the move. That's the idea with that right candle rule. Too bad, you know, maybe we'll have nice morning panic bounce plays this week. Oh, well, I can't trade tomorrow, Monday, because the markets are closed for Labor Day, but after Tuesday and forward, I will be interested in trading. You know, ideally we get morning panic bounce play setups, uh, more listed stock opportunities. I need to start working on other setups too. Uh, specifically with LTCs, I need to stay away with listed stocks. There were some stock setups that I might have traded that would have been nice, like RGBP, when I was not able to trade those because of that thing with Charles Schwab um, already starting to enact to the rule, and I guess the stocks that they're not allowing me to trade, you know, maybe they didn't have the stuff updated, that list, you know, that they have might be an old list. Ideally, a few things can open up, more opportunities are made, and I will be looking forward to that week. No more high day breakout setups with listed stocks. I'm clearly not good at those, but maybe I'll even consider stuff like that for shorting. That's all I got.